Let's pay attention to what customer experience and experience management actually are. For a customer, employee, or partner experience, it's their realities in get, selecting, getting, and using your solution or their relationship with your brand toward their intended outcome. That's what the experience is. And to be more succinct, you could say that it's their realities in comparison to their expectations. Are we meeting or exceeding their expectations in what we're delivering? And if not, are we managing the expectations to a more uh, practical level? So experience management is how you manage what they experience. And that includes how you manage their expectations. I like to think of it in three categories, starting with touch point management, which is aimed at revenue, or if you're an employee experience or nonprofit or government, perhaps it's productivity in place of, re of revenue. But essentially what you're trying to do is reverse and offset churn because every month you have to show successive growth. So you need to make up for what went out the door and touch point management is uh, one of those key ways to do that. Then second, we have experience management with the aim of brand allies. You want your customers, your employees, and your partners to advocate your brand. And we do this through increasing referrals and quick wins. And then thirdly, what's needed now is something more. Experience leadership, which aims at lifetime value maximization for customers, partners, and employees. And we do this by preventing roadblocks to value. Now notice that for touch point management and experience management, we're pursuing how they can maintain or expand revenue or productivity. And for experienced leadership, we're pursuing how can we aid their goals? Because if you aid your employees' goals, your partner's goals, and your customer's goals, they're the hand that feeds you. You rely on them to make everything work to deliver the value and investors rely on that. So what we need to be doing is spending about 50% of our attention on this third column and dividing the other 50% among these first two columns. If we were to do that, we will find that we're laying a foundation of prevention and lifetime value mindset across our entire company and ecosystem so that there's less burden on touch point management, and there's greater uh, traction and scalability and experience management. So we're not saying to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're saying that we need to step up to the new realities of the 2020s that emphasizes and calls out urgently for greater trust, greater values, and greater value, and making sure that we're closing the gap between expectations and realities, which is actually brand integrity. Are they getting what we told them they would get? More than one third of people distrusting business and about two thirds uh, basing their decisions for working, uh, buying and investing on beliefs and values in, in common with them. Now here you can see the Customer satisfaction index in America drip drop, dropping off since 2017, and we have not been this low since 2006. So I think that's a big wake-up call to consider what's working and what's not in the overall scheme of things. Now, Bruce Temkin has run uh, maturity studies for the past 10 years or so, and every year it's the same. Less than 10% of companies in the mature phases of uh, customer experience management and about 80% of people saying that they're incompetent for these six key competencies for how to drive ROI in customer experience management. So how do we address this? The experience leadership mastery can fast track you to that. So what you need to know for 2020s and beyond is 
a different angle on metrics and leading indicators, more preventive, more collaborative, more systemic and sustained, what you need to know for design and change is to emphasize the six A's of experience management because that will make your experience management team exponential in its value creation by engaging more groups in the company to do it themselves, make them self-managing in improving designs, improving the experience, uh, driving efficiencies and driving growth of all manners across your company based on customer insights. It's ridiculous not to. Uh, what we're trying, what we're saying actually is we're de siloizing the company by creating a consistent thread of customer centric uh, thinking and actions across everything done. And that's what we mean by embedding customer insights into the culture and driving accountability for implementation. So your voice of the customer and intelligence needs to support all of the foregoing items. When you have a very clear understanding of these first three items, your voice of the customer takes on a very different angle to be more transformative, to be more collaborative, to be more uh, insightful and uh, stimulating for managers of all types, every nook and cranny of your company to pay attention to what's going on with customers and the intelligence, the, the patterns that you're sharing with them. that are quite interesting. They can't wait to hear your next report and see what they can do about it. So strategy in experienced leadership is bringing this all together in a cohesive flow so that everything builds upon one another. And we're not just managing these things in pockets, but actually having coordination and collaboration across all the various places where experience is managed in a company. Making the intended customer experience or intentional CX your North Star for how the C-suite runs the business and how everyone makes their decisions and handoffs across your company. So it may sound pie in the sky, but we've got to aim for it. And in fact, I have personal experience driving most of what I'm talking about with you when I was in the semiconductor industry and head of corporate quality, leading company-wide customer experience, essentially the chief customer officer for many years. So uh, we followed the six A's of experience management success and what you learn in the experience leadership mastery curriculum teaches you how to do these things from my own experience and many things that I've done since such as uh, benchmarking uh, B2B CX practices globally for five years. I was the first person ever in the world to do a B2B CX practices study. Let's take a peek at the next level, experience management maturity. So here you can see the same content, but it's expanded to include multiple choice quizzes, a quiz game, and topic mastery scenario questions. When you submit your scenario questions, I give feedback on every single one. And when you get 90% or higher on a scenario question and topic mastery, then you get a certificate for experience leadership. So uh, this is again for your director or intermediate level uh, people. And when they log into experience management class, uh, then they're going to see three videos instead of the five that you saw for the automatic experience excellence. So the content is generally the same, but there's quite a bit extra uh, slides in this one. And, uh, you know, it's more on the line, lines of 20 to, to 35 minutes for each video segment. The workbook is, follows suit with the other one. And here you can also see that there's more goodies, case studies, links to templates and examples for a variety of subtopics, and then the overall summary. And also take a look at our five minute demo so clear action means engaging everyone and walking the talk. You know, during the pandemic, everyone was thinking about what's valuable in life. And for me, creating new content, thinking about new ways of uh, helping people to absorb a better way, 
helping to improve the, the whole world by having better experience management in organizations of all type is what I want to do. So I repackaged all of my consulting wisdom and put it into training format or course format or sort short live session formats. And this is why it looks like training, but it's actually e-consulting. It's actually high powered, super rare advice. The kind of advice that you would probably get from McKinsey if you had people at McKinsey with the kind of career background that I have. So this saves you time, continuity in your workflows, and saves you lots of resources compared to going to conferences or traditional training. And the experience leadership angle boosts your influence, reputation, efficiency, capabilities, and growth. It's the answer to turning the tide on that competency uh, report that Bruce does every year or every couple of years so that we can now see 80% of experienced managers having excellent capabilities in each of those competencies. So we could see 80% of companies having strong, high maturity in experience management, not just customer, but employee and partner experience as well. It's ridiculous that since the 2009 economic crisis, we have spent billions on technologies, journey mapping, service improvement, uh, digitalization, all kinds of experience work, and certainly awesome progress. But goodness, we have to change how many people trust businesses. We have to change the trajectory of this customer satisfaction index on an upward slope, not a downward slope since 20, 2017. We have to change the way that people see our shared values and the value continually increasing for customers as much as it's increasing for investors and employees. There, we all rely on customers for our salaries, for our budgets, and for dividends. It makes no sense to be decreasing value for them. When you take Experience Leadership Mastery, you're going to see hundreds of ways that you can be cutting costs, but in a smart way that actually uh, will be rewarded by customers. Mm -hmm.